Hello everyone. Okay, I'm going to run through the complete setup for listing a property on Airbnb. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there who are interested in making some money uh, listing a property on Airbnb. The opportunities keep growing and changing. Um, the uh, the landscape, the Airbnb landscape, continues to change every year depending on the market you're in the location the type of property so it's it's, it's continuously changing and i want to go through all of that with you but we're going to start with uh, the basics of listing a property so here we go airbnb does change their website um, their format the way their platform works so sometimes there there are changes so yeah it's good to keep abreast of the changes i try to stay uh, up to date on all the changes first let's click in here let's cl click into my settings so I can show you a sneak peek so let's see here let me just run through this real quick so 2012 was when I started and you can see here there um, we have 10,000 about 10 thousand dollars in payouts in 2012 in 2013 24,000, almost 25,000. 2014, almost the same, less than 25,000. 2015, we get up to 38,000. 2016, 142,000. So a big jump there in 2016. 2017, 192,000. What this does not take into account is the fact that some of the properties that I'm managing are not always managed directly through Airbnb. So this payout doesn't necessarily include um, all the money, all the income that we've made, and obviously doesn't reflect um, what I made personally on it. So it's not the net income, this is the top line gross rental income for several properties as you can see here there are a lot of properties here and um, not all of them are still current some of them were short term I was might have been working with a, a renter or an owner for a short period of time so um, I can go through a lot of those opportunities with you now let's go ahead create new listing okay what kind of place do you have entire place that's all I do um, shared space I've done a little bit of that um, don't love it okay so I'm gonna this is gonna be um, a kind of a mock setup for a real property that we have so entire place for seven guests Richmond California let me just back up here so entire place for seven guests Richmond California they're estimating an income of fifteen hundred and sixty seven dollars which is completely wrong I don't know where they get these numbers from but you know their machine will not uh, be able to tell you what you can make and the longer you do it the more you will learn that you want to make um, the experience the guest experience uh, the best possible experience which means you're gonna raise your potential income a lot more um, 1567 I have no idea what that would be for but nothing that I uh, work with so. So is this listing a home? Yes, it's a home. What type of property? It is a house. Um, what will the guests have access to the entire place? Is it set up as a dedicated guest space? Yes, there are no personal belongings in there. So how many guests can you accommodate? Seven guests, it says here. How many bedrooms can guests use? Three bedrooms. How many beds? We have a total of excuse me four beds within the three bedrooms so we're gonna say bedroom one has a double which isn't a great uh, situation there should always at least be a queen um, in my opinion but this is a real property it has a double bedroom two has a queen bedroom three has one queen and one single otherwise known as a twin and then common spaces has zero beds how many bathrooms one we I'm just gonna um, make up an address how about that uh, 
Let's not put the real address to protect the innocent. So here is a, a little tip. If you have um, hostile neighbors or people um, that you don't want completely in your business, you can drag this property off the pin. You can click adjust to move the property maybe a block away. Just so you don't have people like uh, sn to snooping, snooping too much. Looks good. So what amenities do you offer? You better have all the essentials. Wi-Fi, shampoo, closet drawers, TV, heat, no AC in the Bay Area. Um, AC would be nice, but no breakfast. Desk. This place happens to have a fireplace. They should all have an iron, a hair dryer. No pets in the ha house, but there is a private entrance. Smoke detector, carbon monoxide, first aid, fire extinguisher. All there. There's a kitchen, laundry, parking. Now, photo time. It says many hosts have at least eight photos. Um, make sure the room is well lit. Yada, yada, yada. Shoot from the corner, etc., etc. What I do is I hire a professional real estate photographer. Um, I have almost every time because it's worth it. And um, this is photos are really important to put your best foot forward. Um, and just realize that your property, people aren't going to be able to walk through your property. They're not going to be able to touch it and test it. Like it's all based on the photos and the reviews and the description. So, and photos obviously is the main part of that. So, now you don't want to put anything um, misleading because, or don't. You know, you don't want to edit it too nicely because they might be disappointed if they get there and that's not what they were expecting. But the photo should be professional and um, and look really good. So let's see here. I'm gonna, all these photos. And I also have more my laundry photos. Let's add those laundry photos and my internet speed test screenshot. Now, we're not done here. Let's put captions in. Cap captions are important. So we're going to say front slash side of house. Front of house. Living room. Coffee table. Okay. Dining table, washer and dryer, high speed internet, high speed Wi-Fi test. Okay. Next, describe the decor, light, what's nearby. Well lit, newly furnished private house, complete with four beds, clean sheets, towels, blankets, cooking supplies, gas fireplace, two TVs with Netflix and local channels. It's good for families, big groups, no furry friends, am nearby. I am always nearby if you need me. You should always fill out as much of this information as possible. The more the better. But you don't have to fill it all out the first time. You can come back later. You can even publish the listing if it's all not finished and still come back later. Just pick up. Bus stop. And BART station. Bus stop. And bus stop. One block away. BART. Station is ten minutes by bus. Listing title very very important. Now, what is the strongest selling point of this property? Clean and fresh. Twelve minutes to Berkeley. 
clean mm, and fresh. I don't know if fresh is the right word. Clean and fresh, private house, 12 minutes to Berkeley. Um, how about clean and cute? Boom, so get ready for guests, booking, settings, calendar, price. Okay, so review Airbnb guest requirements. Mm, Air, so all Airbnb guests must provide email address, confirmed phone number, payment information, absolutely. Before booking your home, each guest must agree to your house rules, etc. confirm, etc. let you know how many guests are gonna be coming. So this is an additional option. If you um, have some reservations or you, you want an extra layer of security, then you can click that they must have a government issue ID submitted to Airbnb. Now, obviously most people have a government ID, but not all of them have submitted it to Airbnb because it's not required. But if you click this box, um, maybe some people won't be able to book your place just because um, they haven't submitted it to Airbnb already. Um, maybe they're, maybe it's a great person, a great family, and they're looking to book a place, and they're driving, they're looking for a place for same day, and you know maybe their internet connection is slow on their mobile phone, and they're having a hard time uploading their government ID. So maybe it's not that they're an uh, evil villain, um, who has a diabolical plot, but maybe they just are having problems with the internet. And so the fewer restrictions and barriers you put, the easier it will be for the potential guest to book your home. Um, that's what it is. But if you feel strongly or the homeowner you're working with feel strongly that they want that extra layer of security at this time, then go ahead and click that. And you can also click this other box that says recommended by other hosts and have no negative reviews. That's a strong one also. Just so you know, I want to, I don't I usually don't have these clicked and I've gotten some reservations with guests who have had bad reviews. Usually they've worked out okay. Like if I see that they have they've had a bad review, then I will let them know that I've seen that and I will say, "Hey, just checking in with you. I saw you had a bad review regarding cleanliness or noise. Just want to make sure that's not going to be a problem." And then usually in the cases that I'm thinking of, they said they ensured me, "Don't worry about it. That was a long time ago." Um, I'll take really good care of your place and they uh, for the most part have so let's uncheck those boxes and move forward set house rules for your guests suitable for children yes infants yes pets no unless you're okay with that it's another cleaning step but usually as a default I'll start with no smoking allowed no pets or parties no guests must climb stairs these are other hindrances and we're going to skip all of those because they don't apply so this is basically about instant book and right here you're almost they're almost trying to sneak this past you but right here in the center you can see this sentence says i want to review every request if you click that then instant book gets turned off and that's kind of like the other security layer we were talking about before but this is uh, a the bigger, um, biggest layer, which means nobody can auto book, nobody, or excuse me, can instant book. Nobody can book your place without you reviewing and approving them. And that will really slow down your bookings. Um, it's not, um, it's not a deal breaker, but like that would be something I might do if I had a very valuable property and, um, you know, with a lot of potential for damage, if you had the wrong group in there and you really want to interview and talk to guests and really thoroughly go through their background, you know, uh, a really high ticket type of property you might want to do um, some kind of fancy, you know, event mansion or something you might want to do before your normal kind of properties where you need, you want the volume coming through, you would want to have this off. Let's click that just to see what it looks like. And they say, before you make this switch, um, 
you're going to lose earnings. You're going to lose search. And if you have it on, we can do the government ID thing. And you also have host ultimate protection if, uh, if you have instant book on. So you can allow instant bookings or continue without them. Let's click on allow them. Okay, and then click next. So have you rented before? I have. How often do you want to have guests? As often as possible. Let's start there. Now, here we go. We are almost published. How much notice do you need before guests arrive? Same day before 10 p.m. Let's go with that. Or let's back this down to 8 p.m. How about that for now, for same day? Let's click on that. Okay. Do you have a time frame? Um, well, it's going to be, we'll say 4 p.m. until 8 p.m. Oh, no, 4 p.m. We can say 11 p.m. is fine. We can even say midnight in general. But guests can book before 8 p.m. If it's same day. If it's same day, they have to book 8 p.m. Um, you don't have to do that. Um, you can turn that to midnight off also. Um, but you just always have to make sure your property is always ready to go. If, if, it's, if people have checked out, you need to always make sure your house cleaners get in there at checkout time to have it ready by check-in. How far in advance can guests book? Okay, so we wanna say for now, we'll start with three months. Usually I will go um, six or nine months because I wanna limit the risk of someone booking for a low price for a short period of time way in the future, which could block the potential of a, a better long-term guest. So we'll put three months for now. Um, nights minimum, we'll just start default at seven uh, for minimum. <coughs> if you're in a real um, high tourist market, you might even do one day minimum. It depends on your situation. Um, but you obviously need to make sure your house cleaners are ready, ready on deck to go make that happen. So we'll just put um, maybe 120 max for now. So do you want to sync with Google Calendar, iCloud? You should if you're comfortable with those. Um, HomeAway, VRBO, we can talk about those later. Or iCal. So block any date. So for now, let's block your, cal block your complete calendar. And we can, after we publish, then we can go in and open updates. So let's double check your settings. Click price is fixed. But we don't trust Airbnb's pricing tool. They go way too low. So we'll, um, but I guess we could, you could do your minimum. You could set your minimum. But the problem with the pricing tool is they don't have a separate um, minimum for weekdays and weekends, which um, is, a, is something to think about. Anyhow, we'll, we'll, we'll go with fixed price for now. So our base price for mine will be 140 for now. And we'll say no special offer for now. Weekly discount, we'll say 6%. We'll start with 6 for week and 12 for the month. We'll start like that for now. Based on your settings, blah, blah, blah. It says your calendar is blocked. Don't worry about that. Check your laws. Don't worry. We'll talk about taxes later. Finish. You're ready to publish, da da, and here we are. Let's publish. You hear that? There it is. So now it says, would you like help hosting your space? Invite a friend. So this is where you invite me. You put in my email address to invite me if we've made that arrangement, but we'll skip for now. Okay, and we're done, you're published.